Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's Django here. First off, apologies for not posting a video yesterday. I actually made a couple of attempts to record a video yesterday, but I had several technical issues. So hopefully all is well today. For today's video, I thought it would be cool to check out Reaper's routing capabilities because it's something that a lot of people struggle with when they first try out Reaper. How does routing work? And why are there no mono channels in Reaper, for example? So in Reaper, there's only one type of track. So if I double click in a blank space here, you get an empty track. In my case, it's not empty. I've saved this EQ here as a default effect. So if I go effects chains, save as default effects chain for new tracks. So that's what I've done with this EQ. So every time I double click in a blank space, I get a blank track with an EQ. Now, this track can have mono audio on it. Let's solo it. This is a recording of me playing bongos. You can see it's a mono file, but it's playing in stereo. So Reaper doesn't have mono tracks. And the advantage of that, of course, is that you can apply stereo effects to a mono source, because the fact is, most of us are listening in stereo to begin with. So there's a nice big stereo effect. We can have mono files and stereo files on the same track. Now we can also have more than stereo on the same track. So this is a surround sound sort of test file. Front left. With my reverb on it. Let's take that off for now. Front left. Front right. So this would have been front center over here. We can't hear it, even though if you look carefully, you'll front see these right. meters moving more than two meters on the track. And if we go in here, we'll see that this track now has six track channels. What track channels are, are lanes of audio within a track. So because this is a multi-channel file, the track channels went from two up to six. And all of those channels are playing. We just can't hear all of them because on my Front master, left. I have a stereo Front output. Right. Um, if we go into the routing here, you'll see track channels two. So that means we're only outputting stereo, even though this track has a multi-channel file on it. If you have a bigger interface and enough speakers, you can set up surround sound fairly easily. So now if we go back into the routing of this track, let's say we want to hear all of these files in stereo, I mean all of these uh, audio tracks in stereo. What you can actually do is go into your routing. So in this EQ, for example, click on where it says two in, two out, and this plug-in pin connector. So at the moment, this EQ is receiving track channels one and two, and then it's processing one and two, and then the output is going to one and two. So we could, Take the inputs from three, four, five, and six. Front left, front center, front and right. And now we're hearing right, all of these track channels. Left surround. So that's one way to do it, but a more practical way would be to use some JS plugins. So if I search here, mixer, you'll see there are two JS sort of multi channel mixers. There's a eight mono to one stereo, which looks like this. So you've got levels for each of the eight uh, mono inputs and pans for each one. And the stereo one sums one and two to one fader, three and four to another fader, five and six, etc. But at the moment, as we know, this track only has six track channels. And this corresponds in here, you'll see these six track channels. So at the moment, we have three stereo pairs on these faders, one through six. And we can test that. For example, this is track five. Front center. So if we turn down this five and six slider. Front center, front right. You'll see that it's 
adjusted the volume of that track. We wouldn't really normally need to do this. However, the reason I demonstrate this is you can have parallel processing of a sound within one track. For example, let's go back to two track channels and take away that surround sound file. And let's loop this bass line. Now, there are various other tools for parallel processing in Reaper. So here is a series of JS splitters, a three band, four band or five band splitter. Let's have a look at the three band. So now immediately we're only hearing the low band. This is because everything before 200 Hertz is one band. That's this first band here. The second band would be from 200 Hertz to 2000 Hertz. That's the mid band, which would be these two. And above 2000 Hertz would be this high band. So if we add more track channels back again, you can also use this little plus button to do so. So now we have bass stereo, mid stereo and treble stereo. So it's taking one stereo pair, our inputs one and two, which has the bass on it. And it's splitting it into three bands. So now we can use a JS joiner and bring all those three bands back. So there's our low band, there's our mid band, and we just left with our high band. And you'll see the corresponding, see these are the inputs being summoned back to a stereo pair that we can hear. So with this plugin, we could, we could now put something between, let's reset those quickly. We could put something between the splitter and the joiner. For example, I'm gonna go for a distortion. Let's use Camel Crusher, which is free. And on this input routing, let's take inputs three and four and output them on three and four. So now we're just distorting that mid band. Now we're just hearing the mid band. We can obviously adjust the frequencies so it's got less low end in it now, and maybe a bit more high end. And perhaps we want to put something like a chorus on just the highs. Um, so let's take multiply, put it before the joiner, and have it affect five and six, which is our high band. That's just the high band now. So parallel processing within one track. That's pretty cool. Let's look at another practical use for multi-channel audio, and that is side chaining. So I'm going to delete this track. This is a bunch of loops and samples I dragged in from Splice. Let's say we want our kick to duck the bass. There are several ways to send audio from one track to another track. The first thing we will do, let's put a sidechain compressor on this bass. So I'm gonna use Recomp. Now at the moment, this is normal compression. So if I drag down the threshold, nothing's happening yet because there's no compression ratio. The ratio just tells you how much compression is happening. So one to one means no compression is happening. Now we can start seeing, so two to one means you can sort of imagine a, a curve of a graph. Anything going above the threshold is getting basically halved in volume. So that's normal compression. However, over here, you see the detector input. At the moment, it's using the main input. 
which is one and two, which is our base. If we add another pair of track channels for three and four for this auxiliary input, now we can select the auxiliary input and you can see nothing is triggering the compressor yet because we haven't sent anything to it. So now let's send the kick to that track. There's several ways we can do that. We can go into the routing of the base and we can add a receive from the kick. That's one way to do it. We can go into the kick, add a send to the base, or we can drag this little routing icon from the kick to the base. And when I turn this up, you'll hear the kick getting louder. So now what this is telling us is that audio from track channels one and two of the kick is sending to base one and two, track channels one and two on the receiving track. But as we've seen, so if I turn this up, we'll hear the kick get louder. Which is not what we want. Instead, we'll send it to track channels three and four, or you can add new track channels here. So for argument's sake, let's go five and six, just to be different. And I'll turn it up. Now we're not hearing five and six because our output is stereo once again. But if we go into the compressor and go into the routing, we can change this auxiliary input from three and four to five and six. And now we see our kick coming in. And if I bring the threshold down, you can hear some sidechain compression happening. The release is how quickly it recovers from ducking. So the earliest sort of common use for this was on radio where a presenter's voice would duck the volume of the music. And of course we use this in modern production quite a bit. Cool. So what if we want to send these bongos to a reverb? I'm going to add another track. I'm going to add a reverb. And I'm going to have it fully wet. So no dry signal coming out of this track, only reverb. And then we can drag this to the reverb track. And now we have a reverb send. Or we could leave it down go into the automation track envelopes and go to track eight send volume. This is track eight. We can call it reverb. And now we could automate this reverb send. See now it says send volume reverb. Perhaps I should also show you how to send multiple outputs, for example, from a drum machine. So I'm going to delete all this, create a new track. Let's call it drums. And I'm going to delete this EQ. I'm going to add these folders, by the way, are my own custom folders. It's similar to the categories, but the categories weren't in Reaper when I created these folders and also these categories of mine have less plugins. They just have my favorites in them. So I still use them even though we now have this categories section. So for sample based, I have sort of sample based instruments like pianos, like contact, like drum uh, samplers and slicers. So here's resamplematic. And let's just quickly add some sounds. In fact, first let's duplicate it. So I'm pressing copy and paste. Now let's imagine we want each note to be a different key, each drum to be on a different key. Let's say start on 48, that's C3, note end 48. So it's only playing on one note. making each of these a different note. So now we have a couple of empty drum samplers, each triggering a different key. I'm going to quickly fill in each of these with drum sounds.
If you click on this little black spot, it triggers the sample, by the way. It helps if the track is record enabled. And let's go. So I'm basically manually creating when you say insert virtual instrument on new track. Basically, I select all MIDI inputs, all channels. I click input monitoring. And now I can play on my keyboard. Our first two samples. I'm going to keep going. Let's add a hat. Cool. For now, let's just do kick, snare, and hat. So they're each on a different note. Let's say we want each of those on their own track. So what I would do is come into this output routing. And for the first one, Let's send it out three and four. Let's add two more stereo pairs. So now for the snare, we're going to say five and six. And for the hat, seven and eight. So now when I press this to trigger it, we're not hearing the hat or the snare or the kick. So the next step would be to create some receiving tracks. Let's call this kick. Snare, I'm hitting tab by the way to jump between the naming. And you can shift tab to go up. Cool, so now I'm going to drag the routing from that track to this one and we want audio. We want three and four, which is with our kick going to one and two on this receiving track. Let's turn that up. Now if I press the kick, we're hearing it. We're hearing it through this kick track now. Let's do the same for the snare. Source of the snare was five and six. Source of the hat was seven and eight. So now we have separate outputs for each of these drums. And now we can record onto this track. Let's turn my metronome on. That'll do for now. I'm not trying to win any awards for this. And now you can see we can EQ each drum individually. Cool, I hope you guys found that useful. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome weekend. Cheers.